Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.18, an Eagle Dynamics A10C2 Tank Killer Module. Welcome to Tutorial 7, Data Link. Today we're going to go over the basics of the Saddle Data Link included in the A10. It has a fairly basic amount of functionality, but very, very useful nonetheless. You have the ability to transmit and receive targets. Uh, you have the ability to broadcast your current SPI and see the currently broadcasted SPI of your flight members. And you can also send and receive text messages. For today's tutorial, I've got John Bloor with me. Hello, John. Hello. How are you hey. doing? Uh, and let's see if we can find him. So if I have a look around right now... Actually, I can't see him on the Scorpion, uh, but I do see him here on the TAD. So something to note is that when you have the data link on, you're going to get blue circles for members of your coalition and... Sorry, no, green circles for members of your coalition and blue circles for members of your flight. Uh, here on the TAD, I have a blue circle with a number two. That's John. Uh, he is my wingman. He's flight member number two. And then the eight uh, that's displayed underneath him is his current altitude. Uh, although it always rounds down strangely because he's currently qu quite close to 9,000 feet. It actually reads eight for reasons that I don't fully understand. Um, so yeah, I can passively hook him and I get a data block at the bottom right. That's kind of handy. And he's way over my left shoulder right now. There he is. I can actually do the same thing uh, if I have the, the scorpion as my uh, sensor of interest. I can move the cursor over him and I get a data block at the bottom left. So very, very handy. Uh, so first thing I'm going to demonstrate is broadcasting speed. Uh, John, I wonder if you could go ahead and press Timus left long for me just now and we'll see what that does. Broadcasting speed. Excellent. Uh, there it is. It takes a couple of seconds to actually start broadcasting. You note that now John has a blue line. Also note, sorry, um, in the Scorpion, it's a number two inside the circle, telling me that he's number two in my flight. The number below him in the Scorpion is actually his distance, not his altitude. Uh, he's, he's currently nine nautical miles away from me. Let me see if I can confirm. Yeah, that's confirmed on the TAD. So you'll notice that he has a blue line now, and at the end of the blue line, he has a small SPI symbol, also in blue. It has a number two inside it. That helps me identify that that is flight member number two's SPI. And the number above is the distance. That SPI is 11 nautical miles away from me. Now, I could team this up short and hook it, or I could team this up long on it, and I could actually make my SPI his SPI. And I could take a quick look via my targeting pod if I make that sensor of interest and go China hat aft long, I'm now looking at exactly his current speed. And so we could share a target that way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rebore sight my targeting pod and stand by it again. And uh, John, I wonder if you could go ahead and stop broadcasting speed now. So if he presses Timus left long again, he will stop uh, broadcasting it and uh, I will then no longer have it showing up on my Scorpion or on my TAD. Uh, so there you go. I'm actually, I'm going to go Timus aft short and Timus aft long. That will unhook and it will reset my speed. Uh, John, I wonder if you could go ahead and broadcast speed one more time. This time I'm going to show the symbology that we have on the TAD. There you go. There we go. So we can see on the TAD, it looks very, very similar. It's a smaller version of the, the SPI symbol and a blue line coming out of John's aircraft. Now, if I want to do the same thing, you can see at the top right of my TAD currently, it says SPI off. If I press TMS left long, it then goes to SPI on with inverse video. And John, can you confirm that you can see my SPI now? I can indeed. Excellent. I'm now going to go Timus left long again and go speed off. Uh, in multiplayer, this is quite handy when you're actually rolling in to do an attack. If multiple A-10s are doing attacks in the same area, you would tend to want to broadcast your speed and that way you could de-conflict. So, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to transmit a target location to John. Now, one thing to note is that you can only ever transmit your current speed. So, make sure that the speed is the location you want to share with a, a wingman first. And then make sure that the TAD is your current uh, sensor of interest and move your cursor 
over the flight member that you want to transmit to. So you can see that I've got John here uh, as flight member number two. I can team this up short to hook him and then uh, that, that keeps him in place rather than doing a passive uh, hook. And you can see that on the right hand side I have send 0201, which is his identifier. The thing to note is that uh, IDs are two digits followed by group IDs which are also two digits. So he is member two of group one. I can now click send and it will immediately send that target to John. So John will now have flashing attack at the top of his TAD and it will say, I think it says new tasking, is that correct, John? It does indeed, yeah. Yeah, he could tap Timus left short to acknowledge that and take away the symbology. He would see a small red triangle at the location that I've sent him and he would have an option on the left of the TAD that says Wilco, that would accept the uh, target and an option on the right that says CNTCO or something like that, which stands for can't comply, and that would reject the, the target. And that's, that's actually the entire process. I've effectively just sent John a tasking that he can now attack. He would then, uh, if he accepts it, he now has a little red triangle. He could move his cursor over the triangle and hook it, and then set it as SPI. Hooking, of course, is Timus up short. SPI setting is Timus up long and we'd then be able to look at that target. I'll now get John to send me a target, and I will go through the process of accepting that. Oh, and we actually see John broadcasting his speed just to confirm that he's looking at the correct target, so that's perfect. So you can see John is now setting a new speed for himself, and he's going to send that to us, and I'll take you through step by step exactly what that looks like. Maybe turn off your speed broadcast, John, because it'll kind of clutter the display. Copy. Excellent. So I'm just waiting to receive that data now, to receive that tasking, and I'll go through the process of accepting it and then getting eyes on target. Cool. How do you do it again? <laughs> and so uh, once you've got your SPI set, John, move yep. your TAD cursor over my aircraft and press Teamus oh, yeah. up short to hook me, and then you can click gotcha. send on the right-hand side. Send. Okay, nothing has happened yet. It should say, uh, underneath the send option, it should say 0101, just to confirm mm. that you're sending it to the correct person. We just, just hit you again. Mm -hmm. Send 0101. That's send. it, that worked. Okay, so yeah. I have flashing attack at the top and new tasking uh, showing at the bottom. I can press Timus left short just to clear that, and you'll note that I now have a flashing red triangle showing me the location that John has sent me. I can click Wilco on the left or cannot comply on the right. I'm going to choose Wilco in this case, and you'll see that now the red triangle is no longer flashing and the attack caption at the top has disappeared. I could now move my TAD cursor over that location. Actually, before I do that, let's take a quick look at the symbology we have in the Scorpion as well. Uh, I don't know if we actually have field of view as yet. We should be getting it any moment now. But it would seem that we don't see anything in the scorpion at first. Maybe I have to hook it first. So I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor over the target. And I'm going to do Timus up short. That's now hooked. And now if I look over my shoulder, there's still no symbology. Okay. I'm now going to move the cursor over it and do Timus up long. That's now my sensor point of interest. I'll now look over my shoulder. I was probably looking at the wrong location. I was, yeah. So if I if I move over here, you can see that on the scorpion, it shows the red triangle and my SPI symbol. That's great. Now I'm going to go to my targeting pod, set air to ground mode, coolie hat right long to make sensor point of interest, china hat aft long to point at my current SPI, and I have eyes on that target location now. And I could do uh, Timus left long to broadcast my SPI, and John would be able to confirm that I am looking at the correct location. But we should expect so, because it was <laughs> transmitted over the data link. I can actually see a blue line coming straight from you to the same mark target point. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to cancel my SPI broadcast now.
and that's all working nicely. So uh, just to kind of step back from that, let's say that I've engaged that target and I want to kind of reset. I could foresight my pod and put it into standby. I could uh, press uh, Timus aft long to reset my speed, and I could actually move my cursor over this uh, target location. And actually, if I do Timus forward long again to make it my speed again, now usually you have an option to actually discard the target. You can often say cancel on the right hand side, but for some reason I'm not getting that right now. Something to note is that you can only ever have. Uh, one of these target locations at a time. So if I was to Wilco on another tasking, this would actually disappear in any case. So that's something worth noting. Um, cool, okay. So that's how the, the taskings work. The last capability that we have is the ability to send text messages. We have a page on our multifunction display labeled MSG for messages. If I go into here, we have options or tabs for new, received, and an option to cancel the current message. I'm going to send a message to John. As I said before, it's two-digit ID and then two-digit group. So to send to John, I need to type 0201. So I can use the scratch pad on the UFC in the HUD here. I'm actually in letters mode. Let's take it out. I can type 0201, and that's appearing in my scratch pad in the HUD. If I'm happy with that, I can click the two line in here, and it confirms 0201. Next, I'll type the actual message. If I press letter twice, you'll see that I get an L underlined. That means I'm locked in letters mode. I can then use the UFC like a, like a T9 or Nokia style keypad to type a message. I'm going to type a very simple message to John. And you do one line at a time. Uh, and you do have a space bar, note. Uh, so I'm going to do two words on the first line, just like that. So that's all in the scratch pad now. I could now click mod text and it gives me the first line. I now have line options where I can go up and down. I could overwrite the first line or I could leave it on the second line and add a second line of text. Um, I'm going to type some more text into here and then choose mod text again. I've now created two lines of text. At this time, I could hit cancel at the top here and it would blank everything, or I could click send message. I'm gonna click send message and John should now have received a text message from me. Ha ha. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, there should be a top line as well. Oh, hello, bam, yes. Yes, there you go. <laughs> okay. So, John, I wonder if you wanna send me a text message now. Copy that. So he's going to follow the same procedure that I just did to send me a message. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, there is the possibility to enter an ID of zero, 00 for a particular group, and that will send a message to all members of your flight. So 0001 would send a message to the entire flight. Sending a message to 0101 would send the message to me as the flight lead. And I guess that's what John's doing. There we go. So in the HUD, we get flashing message. Uh, at the bottom right of both multifunction displays, we see new message with an acknowledge push button. We could press that acknowledge push button to remove the prompt, or Teamus left short will also acknowledge the message. Uh, I could then go to received, <laughs> and I've got a, jo a message from 0201, use your laptop. And if I had more than one message, these buttons would allow me to flip up and down through them. I currently have message one of one. So that's everything I've got. I have the option of deleting this message or I could just leave it in place. I could go back to new and start typing more messages. So I can flip between these uh, two tabs here at any time. And that is all the functionality that you have in the Saddle data link for the A10C2. You have the ability to send and receive text messages. You can broadcast your SPI as you see here. You can receive other people's SPI. Uh, you can see uh, you know, flight member icons, but also coalition icons for other aircraft. And you can also send and receive taskings uh, using the uh, these little red triangles. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, say goodbye to the nice people, John. Bye-bye. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>